Hello everybody, my name is Bearman and welcome back to the By the Window podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the upcoming game, Far Cry 6, and a couple of other things like uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the trio all together, but before that I want to talk about some other stuff, just to get stuff out of the way. If you want to support the stream any further, there's going to be a link down in the description, whether you're on YouTube or the streaming whatever streaming site I've decided to put the videos up on YouTube too and just throw some things in the background in case you wanted to actually watch it and just have some zing some zing sorry I've been uh, working a little bit with my German so I'm mixing a couple of words here and there up but uh, if you wanted to watch something and let your eyeballs not melt into a blank screen of just listening to audio so they're gonna be up on YouTube and uh, over on the streaming site, if you found this on YouTube, there's going to be links in the description to the stream- different streaming sites that that I know that this is distributed on. Some of them I have never heard of that it gets distributed to, but whatever. Now we're going to be moving on to the bulk of what is going to be talking, what I'm going to be talking today, about today. Sorry, messing up a lot of stuff. Again, learning German, kind of hurting my head. There's an ant over there. I want to get up and get him, but that's going to make a lot of noise. This is the first ant I've seen in since last year. So, hello, ant. But uh, today we're going to be talking about Far Cry 6, but before we get into that, I want to say, oh my god, notification. Uh, Far Cry 6 was originally meant to be coming out in uh, February, I do believe. Let me see here. February 18th of 2021 for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Google Stadia. But it obviously has been delayed, or I wouldn't be making this about an upcoming game. It's, uh, they said they were gonna, well, it's gonna come after April of 2021, but no later than March of 2022. So we could have to wait another entire year past this. Even longer than a year if you've been waiting since February, since they said that. But we've got a while left, apparently. And uh, we, m- the thing is, uh, it may be longer than that if something else horrible happens. But whatever happens there, it'll happen. But before we go ahead and talk on, talk about that, I've got a little bit of timeline things to speak about now of course every game has its year that it's based in and some of the some of the alternate universe stuff has has uh, their own timelines and uh, or non-canon things that happen maybe at the same time something else would have happened like uh, take the one game I forgot its name the one Far Cry game that happened after an apocalyptic event. I've done forgotten the name of it, even though I just looked at it literally not five minutes ago. I've never played that one, but uh, it ha- it is not canon, or it's canon in an alternate universe, if you want to look at it that way. But we have uh, the, th- the games that are coming up to what Far Cry 6 is. Now, 2014 is when the fourth game happens I do believe yes 2014 is when Ajay Gale the person you play as goes to Kyrat to spread his mother's ashes ashes and helps with the rebellion and everything or you don't if you just want to wait there like a lot of uh, like uh, the past games have done like uh, Far Cry 5 and, and Far Cry 4 if you just wait you beat the game and everything's la di da da nothing bad happens to you that is that is but uh 2014 is the fourth game i do not remember i didn't have the third game timeline pulled up but it's not far behind that i if i don't believe if i'm not wrong i can scan for a second but the point of the timelines is talking about something i didn't know was going to happen uh the sixth game is after the nuclear bomb.
bombs went off in uh, in the fifth game at the end of it. If you if you uh, choose a certain choice, which is the cannon, I'm guessing. And uh, here we go. 2012 is when it, when that happens. So 2012 is the third game, and 2014 is the fourth game. Only two years apart between those two games. But then you move on to the fifth game, Far Cry 5, which is set in America in Hope County. That is in 2018. So four years after that, Far Cry 5 takes place with John Seed and, and uh, Joseph Seed and all the other Seed peeps. And then, uh, and then at the end of that, the collapse happens, which is the nuclear war. And then we jump ahead 17 years to 2035, where Far Cry New Dawn happens. But what I didn't know what was going to happen is uh, uh, Far Cry 6 is actually going to be set in uh, 2025, if I'm correct. That that was uh, what was announced. If I'm right, to... yeah. You there? There's a there's a timeline you can go to for the Far Cry. It's Far Cry .com, the wiki timeline. Just look up a uh, Far Cry timeline. You should find it. But uh, provisional date for 2021 says uh, the provisional date is uh, when. Far, it says the events of Far Cry 5 take place and then Jack it says for 2045 Jack Carver is hired to take Valerie Constantine to chain uncharted desert Jack gets help from Harlan Doyle and stop Dr. Krieger and try against the events of Far Cry classic instincts, predator, evolution and vengeance take place in 2025 so uh, 2021 it says here so I'm getting two conflicting things I don't know if this is updated or it's behind or something else is not right but 2021 provisional date I guess that just means the uh, it could mean a lot of things whatever I'm not I don't remember what provisional means I, you can call me stupid but whatever but uh, it takes place after the collapse apparently and that's interesting because you watch the trailer and some of the people are torn up and you think oh that's just a a state in which people want to fight back and all that, but but a lot of the little small details could make sense if this is after a nuclear war. But if it was an all-out war, nuclear war, global nuclear war between all the countries that had nukes, there wouldn't be very much point of shooting one at a country that didn't. Why would you waste it? But uh. Even if no, some countries didn't get hit by nuclear bombs, the entire planet would be, uh, the sunlight would be cu cut out, all the plants would die. A lot of the countries that don't have nukes rely on resources from countries that do have them, and thus everyone would perish, all life would perish. Some might still live, bacterial microbes stuff like that might continue to exist afterwards but all big stuff it's a uh, it's gone it's a uh, it's noped out of existence but what I was going to talk about I recently uh, purchased Far Cry 5 again the first time I played it I, it wasn't mine it was my brother's and I borrowed it and beat the entire game but I got it again because I wanted to relive that relive that and uh what actually happens Afterwards, I had no idea New, Far Cry New Dawn was even a thing. Now, I had, for that time, I didn't pay attention to anything that was coming out. I didn't pay attention to anything uh, Ubisoft was pushing because I didn't care. But uh, at that time, I went to wherever it was. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Walmart at that time, and uh, there was a big poster in the electronics section that for Far Cry New Dawn I was like what the what the hell is this what is this I walked over there and the game's in the case and I was like when did this happen how long has this been a thing when did they announce it 
So I I bought it and came home, and then I realized, oh crap, it's after the bombs happened. This is cool, and all that, and uh, proceeded to play the game. I liked the way it worked and all that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't, but uh, I like that you saw all the returning. Uh, you saw a returning character, returning characters, that is, and uh, the thing that really surprised me the most was the baby from Far Cry 5. She, she, uh, you can see her as uh, almost full grown. I'm not sure what her age is. I'm, what kind of stupid for saying that she would be about 17 because it's 17 years later, but uh, or just on the verge of. Uh, 18, an adult, that would make a little bit more sense because she's going out to get shot at, uh, but I like how these game, these games works, I like, uh, well not completely, not the, after so long of taking over outposts and doing little side things like taking a truck, picking a truck up and, uh, taking it back to base, those things wear, wear down after so long, you just want to get it over with. But I recently played uh, Just Cause 4. I played it in a couple days, finished it, because I had free time. And uh, and I like the way that game works. And it reminded me of Far Cry. And then I went and bought the fifth game. And I started playing that. And don't get me wrong, Just Cause 4 works, does it worse, a lot worse and a lot better in certain circumstances because you're actually in a war taking things over in a in that game you're just taking outposts and that one outpost is yours but there's still enemies driving around or hanging out and in the area you're not taking a full area you're not seeing it visually just that one spot is yours now is the people that you're helping the resistance and I like it I just liked how these games work. The first Far Cry game I played was the third one. And I fell in love with how it worked. I feel just like many people, I really liked Voss. And he's still one of the greatest uh, villains and uh, villain character or characters altogether in uh, in video games or stories as per everybody. And then they started taking it a little bit downhill and then just copy pasting apparently to everybody. Now, I don't really have a problem with the. I really liked the Far Cry 5, and I really didn't latch on to the fourth game. I didn't really care for it all that much. I never actually beat it, so there's that. That gives you any idea how much I really didn't like it. Usually, when I get a game, I usually beat it because I paid for it. Or somebody else paid for it and gave it to me. I'm going to beat it to get whatever I pay uh, to get the money's worth out of it. Some games I get free and never never beat them. Or like a VR VR game, I usually don't beat those. But if I pay for it, I will play it. I will figure out what everything happened. Just like uh, how Last of Us Two Part Two went. A lot of people did not like that for various reasons. For one main reason, actually, and I was one of those people, and they talked about it, and uh, they said that they had different plans for how it was going to work, and I liked how they said that, but then they started running. They're like, that's going to take too long. That's going to take too long. You took forever to do it in the first place. You just wait a little bit longer and make the game better, but plans changed. And a lot of people didn't like that. And I guarantee, and with all the refunding and stuff, I guarantee most, a lot, of, a huge chunk of the people that bought that game did not beat it. I kept it because I I pre-ordered it. The digit I pre-ordered the digital version. I didn't want the disc. I didn't want to go anywhere to get it, so I just bought it from home. And uh, I pre-ordered it. Did not like it. Did not like the way they took the story. All the fighting and crap, that's that's amazing. All the visuals, that that's top notch, top of the notch. How everything else worked. But still, the story sucked. And I'm still actually playing it. I'm still playing grounded mode, but I'm skipping all the story content. Because there's a... If you ever looked it up, there's 10 plus hours in there that is uh, of cutscenes. 
but Far Cry 6, a lot of people want... Oh, and Primal was in there too, and that was the start of everything, of the Neanderthals and stuff in Far Cry. You can go to the timeline, see all that stuff, all the ages and where everything from the games fits in if you want to, but uh, I wanted to talk about how Far Cry 5, no, Far Cry 6 needs to change a little bit of stuff. It needs to change how the game works a little bit, how the survival works, how healing, all that stuff needs to update itself. Because if it doesn't, it's going to be get to get left behind. Just like a lot of things, people are going to be disappointed. Now, a lot of people are already speculating that uh, the little boy in the trailer where is Voss because of the little cut in his, uh, on his eyebrow was uh, how the live action Voss was in the in the video they shot, if I remember correctly. But uh, no, that was just in the video of the game. He doesn't actually have the little cut in his eyebrow. Okay, I paused it a little bit there, and I couldn't figure out how to unpause it. It was stuck for a second. It froze. But uh, I found this really good article about how Far Cry 6 needs to rediscover its... Uh, the way the games worked before it changed over to re to toppling uh, dictators and uh, regimes, evil regimes and all that. Uh, it gives a really good uh, recap of what happens in the second game and what happens in Far Cry 5 and 4 and, well, mostly 5 because uh, it talks about a lot of things, but it says uh, Far Cry 5 is an incredible busy game. It is. There's a lot of stuff going on at all times. The sweeping scenery of rural Montana is constantly interrupted by a chat by the chatter of gunfire, cultist filled vehicles tumbling over each other to get at you, angry honey, honey badgers nibbling your ankles. Honey badgers are ridiculously strong in the game, by the way. And eagles determined to claw out the eyes of any human that falls under their shadow. That's also true. Uh, it's then it goes on to say that the series built has built chaos into its systems ever since Far Cry 3. Exactly what I said uh, for uh, for toppling regimes and uh, beauty, the way every, the scenery looks good and all that. Of course, every every game they put out is going to look a lot better. Like I liked all the colors and stuff in the New Dawn because. All the flowers mutated and stuff like that. I liked how it looked. It was all weird and un unearthly, if you wanted to put it that way. But he, he or she, I don't know who wrote this. I should probably look at that. It only said it only takes a, about a minute for me to be reminded what the of what this game is about. He says uh, at a nearby intersection, a zealot filled pickup truck mindlessly mindlessly plows its way through traffic and its determination to run me down. I take them out only to be headbutted by a wild turkey. That that's just constant chaos, constant fighting, constant constant action. And then he goes on and says something about a bear joins in and tears everyone inside to pieces. Uh use a grenade, by the way. They usually tend to get rid of them, but the thing he's trying to get at here is it's hard to just stop for a second and just look around and take in the beauty of the game. It's There's not very many slow points where you stop and realize what's happening and have time to uh, revel in the trees and uh, the skies and the beautiful scenery of the game. Loud noise. Uh, I had to move a speaker. But, uh, and then, it, and then what he says is exactly what I expressed last time, a uh, couple minutes ago. The unpredictability of the chaos becomes predictable. And you increasingly find yourself trying to quietly sidestep the chaos. After so long of going through outpost fighting constantly, 
every every two seconds going down the road you pass an enemy and they want to fight and they want to chase you down and you just get tired of it so you just go right on past it and don't pay attention to anything that's happening anymore because it doesn't slow down see Far Cry 2's open world I'm taking this in I haven't played the game but I have seen some things over it so I'm taking this guy's word I, I'm I'm going to play the game eventually, but I don't know when. Is uh, he says that Far Cry 2's open world is similar similarly brutal. It forces you to engage with it and even connect with its relatively shallow characters. I can guess that part. It came out a while ago. You're plagued by malaria and you have to maintain a stock of pills to stop it overwhelming you. Your health doesn't recover automatically. Your guns jam and you have. To, Pull bullets from it and shrapnel out of your flesh to avoid bleeding out. Your buddies who show up mid battle to save you can die forever. Even the physical in game map that you read while driving a Jeep one handed across the savannah pulls you out of your usual gaming comfort zone and in turn pulling you into the game world. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the chaos does kind of require your complete attention to do everything but hold on a second gotta move some but uh what he's saying here is that even though a lot of this stuff doesn't have as much variety have any mean as many animals as the newer games have as many different enemies all the extra stuff that comes with more ram capacity and uh computing power from the newer games it made up in design because a game that is basic like that nobody would like they would have to have have a good world built on not just one little pity thing and uh, he goes on to say Far Cry 5 feels like the most weightless game in the series and when you do finally find your when you do finally find yourself face to face with this Korish inspired villain it's jarringly sincere what does that mean oh I, I get it I, again I'm reading this for the first time I usually skim through these before hand but I didn't have enough time now because it's getting close to 1am and I want to go to bed but he, he says it's jarringly sincere like a oh well hello you're not scary there's so much stuff going on that one dude doesn't really one dude piled on top of it doesn't seem all like all that much more there's so much crap going on there's so many things happening that one extra thing you would wouldn't make a difference i see always talking i see how the design aspects of the game and how everything works in the sixth game have to be better improved and not just a copy paste of what's been happening now of course the game once again I'm guessing is going to be about toppling a dictatorship of some sort after the great collapse just like the fifth game the fourth game the third game just to stick with the little uh, way of the way of doing things in the games to stick with the line of train of thought or whatever I I'm losing words here but yeah they're just gonna stick to that because it's the way they've been doing it for a while now and I see that but they've gotta they've gotta come up with something new to do there or it's gonna lose people's attention it's not gonna get it's just gonna be another crash and burn game we've got a couple of those the past year and uh, I would like to see a game that doesn't completely ruin everybody's opinion of a company I would like to see a game that people actually tried to work on and wasn't rushed and wasn't wasn't a cash grab or wasn't tried they didn't try to work now uh, here I'm going to take a break for a second and you're going to listen to my past self go 
But if you're on YouTube, you're not going to be hearing this because what well, it's for not you. That's what that's what's happening. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that for the people listening on the streaming sites. But if you're on YouTube, you didn't hear that because it's just straight rip. But rip from straight from the audio recording but that's how i'm recording my podcast if you heard that sponsorship you can check it out in the description below it's uh going to be one of the links to my stream to uh where you can listen to just the audio of this but uh what uh, back to what i was saying this game's got to go back to its roots and figure out the design again if they want to continue to keep people's attention and not just to throw out a new call of duty game uh, Call of Duty game every year like Call of Duty does I worded that wrong let me try again and not just uh, throw out another game every year that's basically copy paste with slightly different mechanics like Call of Duty is there we go but yet Call of Duty keeps pulling people back so they don't really have to try hard where they are now do they but uh, yeah they have to go back and uh, do what uh Resident Evil has done. They had action all the way, hardcore action, all uh, fighting. They it, they turned away from their horror aspect in their games, and they decided, hey, let's sit down, let's uh, let's try something different. Let's go back to our horror ways. And uh, Resident Evil Seven, uh, B- Resident Evil Biohazard came out of that, and uh, it's a great game. And then I have an episode about uh, up in the new one that's coming out Resident Evil 8 uh, Resident Evil Village if you want to hear that I'll put a link in the description or you can just find it on the streaming page or whatever and uh, they're going to have to do that but now I wanted to talk about since uh, I didn't feel like it deserved its own episode because it's not really all that long the episode would be about maybe 3 or 4 minutes long at max but uh we're going to talk a little bit about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Now, there's nothing really here to talk about because these games have been out. It's a trilogy if you've never played Mass Effect. I, I'm i willing to bet that you should wait until the Legendary Edition comes out because uh, it's going to be high definition. Uh, everything's re- reworked. Not reworked. There, everything's still there except for a couple of DLC packs that were for multiplayer and all that but uh it says on their website one of the things is uh it says mass effect mass effect legendary edition includes a single player based content and over 40 dlcs from the highly acclaimed mass effect mass effect 2 and mass effect 3 including promo weapons, armors, and packs remastered and optimized for 4k ultra hd now if you go to uh, EA.com Mass Effect the Mass Effect website part of their website they they have a little video that plays and uh, it has one of those slider things to see the old version to the new version and uh, it really shows how much crap has changed between these games it shows the very first game which was clunky but it was out there it got people hooked hooked into the game they changed the hood, the HUD, the way things looked. It looks like they added, they added more props into the game as well. Because there's more vegetation and everything there. This game is going to be straight up just beautiful. All three of them are going to be beautiful in this remaster, and that's what it is. They're not changing anything. If you've played the games before, you're probably a little bit mad about how the third one ended. A trilogy of games just to head on to where that one to just kaput out of nowhere but uh, yeah this game is gonna be awesome now if you've played Mass Effect as much as I have or some other people have, a lot of people have played it a lot more than I have I've replayed all the games multiple times we have replayed two of the games uh, multiple times because I made one decision I didn't want to make and didn't save it beforehand and I didn't want to and I messed up in, or I was messed up in some way and 
just replayed the game up to that point and made the right decision. Just to fix that one little error that I made. Now, uh, the thing is, the reason I'm suggesting is to wait is because I'm guessing this is all going to be on one disc or just one digital download. And then you have a menu that you pick which game you want to play or something like that. Something fancy on all that. Or all that, because it's just one thing, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. There's not a Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition or 2 Legendary Edition. It's just one entity. So, that's going to be a thing. If you wanted to play it on uh, just the originals, you'd have to, like, say on Xbox, you would have to to play the first game. No, it's the third game, or the second game. I don't remember which one it is. It's been quite a while since I've played it. But you have to have two di two separate discs to play it. At some point, you got to pop that one out and put the other one in. It's normal for that. A lot of games on there have that kind of... On the Xbox 360 have that. Now, what I remember from uh, PlayStation is... I don't remember them having two separate discs. I don't, I don't... That's not how they worked. But I played them on both. Had a great time with, with them on both. I love this game, these games. I love what they did. And they're making another one after this comes out. This is just a remaster. Uh, rework of everything. Uh, making everything look pretty. And run on PlayStation 5 and 4. Now, if you've got a PlayStation 5, there's no point in looking at it on a 4. Because it's just going to straight up look worse. But... The new game that's coming out, I don't know anything about it, and I haven't looked into it. But uh, the people getting off the the starship looks like uh, the outline to one of the aliens from Andromeda. So there's going to be another Andromeda game if they haven't given up on that already. Unless they just decided for the trailer to not to make to not make new assets, which would be kind of douchey and kind of misleading. But whatever, they're doing that anyways that with all the bugs that they had even though I didn't have a problem with Andromeda I didn't really criticize it all that much it was Mass Effect but it wasn't Mass Effect in my heart because Shepard wasn't there and it wasn't all the normal characters that I knew that was the only thing a change can break your mind a change doesn't make doesn't help you like uh there's some kind of phenomenon forgot what it's called or not a phenomenon it's something where if you learn something as one thing and then they change the name on you when you learn something and you know what's called this one thing it's going to feel weird if you figure out they changed the name or you've been calling it wrong because you you associate it with the original name first there's not gonna it's gonna be hard to or it's going to be unsettling to change it and call it something different. Now, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. There's not really much I can throw out there about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Unless you wanted a helmet, because you can buy the Legendary Cache, the cache for it, and get a 1 to 1 scale replica of the N7 helmet for Shepard, which is pretty freaking awesome. I'm sure it's not going to be that high quality because they can't make a spacesuit out of it. It's not going to be exactly right, obviously, because that technology doesn't exist like it does in Mass Effect. But hold on a second. That's douchey. Let me just read you read out what this says. The perfect addition to any Mass Effect fans collection. This bundle includes a replica wearing wearable N7 helmet and LED light effects with LED light effects, steel case, art print, and enamel spinner pen. N7 acceptance letter, which is kind of cool. Doesn't make any sense. They should just send it to you in an email because that's how it works in their world. But uh, you would probably want to get something uh, tangible in that. If you're paying as much as I think you have to for this. In full color box 
Plus, you get an exclusive FemShip canvas print when you purchase through the Bioware gear store. Note, this is the part I'm a little pissed about. This bundle does not include the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This doesn't even have the game in it. This is just the gear. How much does this cost? 150 bucks. And it doesn't even come with the game. You know how stupid that is? You want to know how many reviews it has? 18, because that's how many people have bought it. <laughs> There's only 18 people that has bought this. From here, that is. It's not even eligible for free shipping. It costs 150 bucks. Oh my god, that makes me really mad. Whatever, I'm done with this. If you want to listen to other ones, go look for them. If you're on the page on the streaming site, just click on whatever it is to bring you to the all the rest of them. If you're on YouTube, you have to head over to the streaming site, unfortunately, because I didn't upload the other ones. But I'm going to start doing that now. I guess I'm done now. Bye.